um, specialist for the district and also the robotics director. And um, in the summertime, I am the camp invention director. And so I just want to put a plug in if you like to help kids, you want to build stuff with them. Um, about March, right after spring break, I put out applications to help with um, camp invention. So I'm always looking for great high school students to come help us with that. And that's for kindergarten through fifth grade students. So anyway, um, this is Emily Mortimer. She's from the Tulsa Regional STEM Alliance. They are sponsoring our STEM cafe this morning, our first one. And I'll let you say more. Thanks. Good morning, Broken Arrow. Thank you. How are you guys? Good. Good. And hello to all of our Facebook Live friends and all the students who are going to be watching this on their lunch hours or outside of this time. We just want to welcome Shelby Hill from OU. From, she's from the Department of Meteorology, Undergraduate Programs Recruitment. And it's one of the flagship programs here in Oklahoma. So you kind of notice that we're doing a lot with meteorology at TRSA this year. And obviously in Oklahoma, weather's a pretty big deal. So this is a really, really great program to get involved with. And if you have any interest in meteorology or some of the career pathways that you can use meteorology, she's here to talk a little bit about that. So welcome. Hi guys, uh, as Emily said, my name is Shelby Hill. I'm the undergraduate coordinator for the OU School of Meteorology. Uh, so everyone here, you're kind of thinking about a STEM career, right? Leaning in that direction. Do you know generally what areas you're interested in yet or still figuring all of that out? Yeah, it's early. I feel that. Um, what age levels do we have? Freshmen, sophomores, seniors, juniors? Juniors. Juniors. Sophomores. sophomores. All right. So uh, you have to excuse me, I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit so we can run through this presentation. And I understand you guys have to be leaving for homeroom at 745? Or get to homeroom at 745? Okay, give me a wave when it's time, getting close to time to go because I don't want to make you late. Okay. All right, so uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I wear several different hats for the School of Meteorology. I work with students when it comes to academic advising. I work with them um, for, I do some event planning, communication with the students. I also run the school's social media. Uh, but ultimately, this is my job. Uh, my main purpose at the school is to get students through to graduation. So this is our graduating class from this past spring. They were pretty excited, but also pretty ready to go. So you guys can imagine. Uh, that's a lot of years of hard work, and uh, ultimately, this is where you go, you know. Now, the true goal, of course, is getting a job, right? You know, you don't just want the degree. You want to be able to go off and get a job and buy all the cool stuff that you want to buy, right? help out with society, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. So there are some really neat interactions with meteorology. Um, you know, we realize that not everyone is going to end up long term in maybe a meteorology field, but there may be ways if you're thinking about things like physics, math, engineering, that relate directly to meteorology or that you can coordinate with. So one thing we'd like you to keep in mind is that if you're not necessarily um, interested in meteorology, there's always ways to do interactions. So if you don't want to go and be a pure meteorologist all the time, we hope you still consider coming to uh, visit us and consider a major or minor. So the School of Meteorology is housed in the uh, beautiful National Weather Center. How many of you have been to Norman to the National Weather Center before? Okay, awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys have gotten the chance to visit. It's a pretty neat facility, right? It's uh, located on the south end of OU's Norman campus, and this is our building. This is kind of what the interior looks like. They modeled it a little bit after uh, kind of the design of a teaching hospital. So the idea is to have scientists who are actually doing the work there in the building with students who are learning about it. And uh, here are a few of our students. They actually participate in a group called Weather Friends, where they dress up. You guys may have seen them at various events around Oklahoma. They dress up like superheroes. They even have training cards. And they go around and they teach young kids, you know, and typically elementary age, about the weather and, and severe storm safety. Here are some of our students um, as they participate in events around the Weather Center. One thing that's really cool about, about our location, because of the fact that we're co-located with so many uh, regional and state and federal centers, is that our students have the opportunity to do some job shadowing, like you can see here in the top right-hand corner. Um, have you heard of the Storm Prediction Center living in Oklahoma? Probably, yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, one of our students actually working with one of our alumni, uh, going through learning about the real work of the, the uh, meteorologist of the Storm Prediction Center. Here you have uh, just a little, a few more looks at our, our program. One thing that's really neat, we do have a rooftop classroom. So, you know, in Oklahoma, we're pretty flat. It doesn't take much to be able to see a really cool view. So we have uh, five extremely tall stories. So when you're on the uh, top of the weather center here, it's more like being on the 10th floor and you can see for miles around, we have this beautiful rooftop observatory. 
um, where students learn to do things. You also may have seen some trucks like this around uh, the state. You'll see these guys out. Um, anytime there's severe weather going on, they've got radar, they've got lots of different uh, observations they're doing there. And while not every one of our students will spend all their time on a truck like this, it's something that our students do um, participate in, they get out there, they do that field research. We don't encourage them to do storm chasing per se on their own because that can be really dangerous. But in a truck like this, uh, they really have the opportunity to get out and to make those observations. And uh, most recently they were deployed to uh, Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. So you guys heard about that, I'm sure, on the news. Uh, it was uh, some pretty devastating events, but they were able to get measurements that can hopefully help us as we progress into the future. Another thing that I think is really impactful is we put a premium on our students being able to interact with other meteorology departments and schools uh, across the world. So it's a, it's a global program. Uh, on the right you can see our associate dean uh, on a project there in Portugal. So they went out and did some really neat measurements in Portugal, 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 kind of a remote village. Uh, and then this is a group of our students when we went to visit our one of our sister programs in Reading in the UK. So how many of you are thinking about maybe studying abroad during college? Have considered it before? Okay. Maybe not yet. So something that's really neat, I think a lot of times uh, students don't realize that they can study abroad in STEM majors. So they tend to think of study abroad as something you do, like if you're a French major or a German major. But we really want to see our students study abroad as well because there are students studying not just the atmosphere here in Oklahoma. They really look at worldwide uh, all kinds of information. So we want them to get out and see all kinds of things. Another thing we're very proud of is we do have an extremely inclusive environment. So, you know, we hear these buzzwords about, a lot about diversity and inclusion, um, and there, there are all kinds of things that we talk about. But what's most important to us is that anyone, regardless of background, uh, whether we're talking about race or ethnicity, as it leaps to the front of most people's minds, um, gender, even being from a smaller town or a bigger city, uh, all these things can impact your, the way that you think. So we want you to come in and feel uh, welcome and, and know that we value your contributions uh, whatever your background may be, and know that we know that we're better scientists when we have uh, an inclusive environment where we have people from all different backgrounds. So in the school or in the National Weather Center, we're co-located with all of these different entities. So you can see here things like the South Central Climate Center. You can see things like the National Severe Storms uh, Laboratory. Um, NOAA offices, the Storm Prediction Center, as before I mentioned, the Weather Decision Training Division, which actually trains all the meteorologists who go out and make those warnings, those people that make the call that say, here's a scary enough warning that you're out of school tomorrow, you know, when it comes to winter weather. So we thank them. Uh, we definitely have our students tweeting at them most of the time saying, make the call, we're ready to be out. So uh, it's pretty neat to have all of these real world uh, scientists there in the building with us. You know, if you're a business major or something like that, I always pick on business, you don't get to have CEOs just walking the hallways with you. That's not something that happens. But here in the National Weather Center, uh, we do have these world-famous scientists walking the halls with our students, sometimes sitting down to lunch with them, that kind of thing. So if you're interested more in the engineering side, we want you to know that you can find plenty of interactions between engineering and meteorology. In this particular case, uh, this is one of our students showing off uh, sort of a mini helicopter that is uh, that goes out and does meteorological measurements. So this is un an unmanned aerial vehicle. I learned that we're not supposed to call them drones. I think that has some other kind of context. Uh, but this is something that's really neat. And the student, you know, they work a lot with electrical engineering. So if that is something that interests you, you can go in uh, and work on projects like this. <coughs> These students work in conjunction with um, also departments like math. So how many of you are taking calculus or pre-calc already? Okay, so you know, you want to just go ahead and jump on uh, Howie Bluestein's equation there? No, not so much. I know I couldn't do this. Uh, before the sun's really all the way up, definitely. I probably couldn't do it anyway because I'm a higher education person and not, not a meteorologist. But this is actually one of our faculty, Dr. Bluestein. You can see the name there. And uh, if you love math, if you are ready to embrace math and spend a lot of time on it, we want to see you go to work on things like this. And uh, believe it or not, there's a time in your life when you'll be able to look at something like this and say, okay, I can, I can kind of see what's going on here. So we also have a lot of great interactions with computer science. So anybody already thinking about computer science? No, maybe sort of programming. Okay, so that's something uh, we're seeing more and more of our students go ahead and do a double major or a minor in computer science. So as we see uh, data assimilation become more and more important, every day we're able to take on more data and someone has to sort through it and make sense of it and uh, find ways to store it and to use that information for us. So 
Computer programming uh, is especially particularly lucrative, so if that's something that you're interested in, doing that major and minor can put you over the top of the job uh, market. And uh, because those skills are a little rarer, we want to see you uh, come in and, and gain those skills while you're at OU, and then go out and have your choice of jobs in the private sector. We also have a number of interactions with the physics department. So meteorology is essentially a lot like an applied physics degree. So our st students are studying the physics of the atmosphere, trying to predict a nonlinear environment. Um, and, and physics is incredibly important. Students start studying thermodynamics right away. And uh, we want them to know that if you're thinking of physics, you can turn your physics and kind of apply it to the atmosphere and make a career out of meteorology. So another interaction we have is with the Radar Innovations Laboratory. They're our next door neighbors. They're um, considered part of Weather Enterprise at OU, so it's still an OU center. This is a really neat place um, that our students work in if they're uh, working in conjunction with electrical engineering or computer science, um, sometimes even civil engineering. So it's a, an amazing and beautiful facility next door to us. Here's their, um, their lobby. They actually have a tornado simulator, which is pretty neat. Um, just to stand there and watch. And they have this beautiful lab where they have uh, something like 70 scientists working together. They have a bay where they work through um, and they create and, and adjust those vehicles like we saw pictures of before. They have a machine shop where they develop their productions. And then they have this, which is an anechoic chamber, and it's essentially um, like the soundproofing that you would see in a music booth if you go to record a, a music album, times I don't even know what. I mean, this is the most silent space you can be in. And what they actually do is they test radar in here as well as antenna, um, and they need no interference. So they say that it's actually kind of eerie to be in there because it's the most silent space you can imagine being. So some important tips we want you to take away, and I want to leave some time for questions, so we'll just kind of buzz through these. Um, we want you to know in high school, whatever STEM major you're going into, you really want to take all the math and science courses that you can in high school. So um, our director always tells us, you know, he went through a phase where he always asked people, are you good at calculus? Are you good at physics? And you know, that's not necessarily a helpful question, because what does that mean? Does that mean you can do it without studying? Does that mean that you were kind of born with a natural aptitude? What's really important is, are you willing to embrace it? Are you willing to put in the work necessary to go through those courses? So a lot of times, I think students struggle to find that love of math or that love <coughs> of physics. Um, it takes a lot of work, right? You know, calculus is not something you can just wake up and know every morning. It takes practice. It takes uh, reiteration all the time. So embrace it, love it, make it your bread and butter. Uh, it'll serve you well wherever you're going. Another thing that's very important is to learn to manage your time wisely. So how many of you uh, play an instrument, play sports, involved in other extracurricular activities? Excellent, that's what we like to see. So uh, even if you work a job, that kind of thing, time management is going to serve you better than anything else really that you can learn in high school. Is that accurate? No? Okay, so you do have to learn a few other things, right? You have to pick up some skills in high school, but one of the most important skills you can pick up is time management. So what I mean by that is, okay, if you play a sport and you know that you have some homework that's due on Wednesday and you know that you have activities going on with your sport in, on Monday night and on Tuesday night, you know you have to do that homework Sunday even though it's not due until Wednesday. That's a skill, that kind of thing. Predicting your time, planning on your own, without a parent to prompt you, without a teacher to say, hey, don't remember, or don't forget, that's due on Wednesday, and uh, you need to start it early this weekend. That's what's gonna help you to go through and be successful in college. Our most successful students, those students with the double major and the 4.0 and the $25,000 scholarship and the job waiting on them the second they walk out with all the money to buy the coolest car and the nicest clothes, whatever, uh, those are the students that, that manage their time wisely. So if they have two hours of downtime between classes, they're not gonna just sit in the corner and be on Snapchat and whatever. They are going to take that time, they're gonna take an hour there and they're gonna look over notes, they're gonna prepare for their next course and be uh, where they need to be. So another thing we want you to know is that you have to learn to ask for and accept help. So something that our director always likes to remind people is that even Einstein asked for help. So uh, whenever he was working on the theory of relativity, he actually went to a famous mathematician named Max Planck and asked him to check his equations because for all the wonder that he was uh, in his own field, you know, working through those math equations was not the easiest thing for him. So our director always, always tells students, be like Einstein, ask for help when you need it. Uh, and that can be tough, right? Especially if you are really, uh, 
hardworking in high school and never really had to ask for help, when you get to college to actually go to someone and say, hey, walk me through these, uh, these problems, hey, look over my, my quiz and help me know where I went wrong, it can be hard, but you have to find a, kind of set that aside and know that everyone, even the best and the brightest, even Einstein is going to ask for help. So be willing to do that. OU has wonderful help resources, I'm sure you do here as well, so go to your math tutoring centers, go to your physics centers, uh, retake chemistry exams, whatever you can do, get people to walk you through because they don't just sit there, they'd much rather talk to you than they would sit in their offices all the time, I'm confident of it. So go and ask those people for help. We also want you to know that AP or IB courses, concurrent enrollment, all of these things are wonderful for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, most importantly, they're going to teach you what the college atmosphere is like. So if you can get a hold of anything that teaches you what really uh, a college atmosphere is like, that is a great source. Um, they also can save you a little time and money because they're courses you won't have to retake whenever you get to the university. Um, so take those if you can get your hands on them. If you can't, we understand not every school has every opportunity. Sometimes things are offered at the same time and you can't be in AP Calculus and AP Physics or something like that. Um, but do what you can to get into those and work with your counselors. They're, they'll help you walk through those things. Uh, another thing that I would encourage you to do is build your team, right? So what I mean by that is have your person. You know, if I have a question about uh, a law issue, a legal issue. I have a good friend who went to law school and so I have somebody that I can send a quick Facebook message and say, hey, what do you think about this issue? Um, if I have somebody that I need help with, uh, my computer at work, I have somebody that I can call down and say, hey, could you come look at this for me? So build those people around you. You know, if you're not the physics expert, make that friend that is and maybe you're the calculus expert or maybe you're the IT expert. So build your team, have people that you can go to and say, you know, do you want to walk through these physics problem with me tonight or can we can we look at this calculus together so have your people around you um, we also want you to know to remember to have a little fun now and then so you know if people can get really bogged down in their science their research um, we want you to go outside every once in a while I always tell my students go and see the Sun you know actually feel the wind on your face it's important to, to make time for that kind of thing um, but in having your fun, one thing that I always try to remember students, being a, a social media coordinator, I try to remind students, um, nothing on the internet ever, ever dies. And your future university scholarship committees, uh, job applications, things like that, we do Google your name. So uh, please, please, please be aware that things that you don't know that someone screenshotted or someone else held their phone while someone else recorded your story, whatever, it happens. So be very conscious and cautious of what you put online. Um, we don't want you otherwise to uh, undervalue your soft skills. So something that I see sometimes um, being, uh, working with students in STEM fields is that they tend to really highly value things like their knowledge in physics or their knowledge in calculus, uh, their ability to program. But there are also what we call soft skills. So the ability to stand up and give a presentation when necessary. Even as a scientist, I think students tend to forget that even scientists have to give presentations at conferences nationwide sometimes. Uh, if you work for a company, you may have to present sh to shareholders or build a budget. Um, there are al also almost always going to be opportunities for you to hire or fire someone in the long term as you move forward through your careers, even if it's a research assistant. Uh, so learn those soft skills. You know, when you take a public speaking class or if your university asks you to take a uh, management course of some kind, take those kinds of things seriously and uh, really learn those things and they'll serve you in the long term. So the last note I'll leave you before we kind of go through some questions. Uh, you just know that hard work pays off every time. That can be something that's really hard to remember, particularly if you have to work while you're in school and you have to manage other things, family responsibilities. But know that hard work pays off in the long term. As I mentioned before, these students that I see, you know, they're in the building before I am. They're studying between every class. They're going to have the pick of jobs when they graduate. And the pick of jobs means the pick of cars and houses and clothes. It means the pick of vacations. And so even though it's hard to believe, the work you're doing now, the work you'll do when you go off to your universities will affect your long-term quality of life to a degree. So just learn to, to love hard work and to get into it, and uh, it'll pay off in the long run. So I'm going to open it up for some questions. That's a lot of information in a short amount of time and an early hour. But I did bring some pretty cool stuff with me. I've got some t-shirts and some pet tornadoes. Seems a little funny to give those out without knowing who. I have a question. Yes, please. What's a pet tornado? Oh, a pet tornado. Well, I'll just show you. It's pretty nifty. It's a little tornado in a bottle. 
we give these as graduation gifts to our students. <laughs> Not all of our students study tornadoes, but most of them like to keep this on their desk. So, that tornado. Swirling around. Any questions? No. Does anybody want to name one of the areas that meteorology interacts with? Okay. Okay, and uh, what can you do if you go to the UK? Thinking about study abroad? All right, okay. We'll give you a pet tornado for that. That's a pretty good answer. <laughs> Can anybody name one of the sciences that meteorology interacts with? Go for it. Physics. Good job. We can hear what you're saying. Physics. Can somebody else name an area? Computer science. Computer science. All right. In what way? Um. Well, you probably have to graph a lot of like. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're talking wind patterns. We're talking. Um, Fronts as they move across, you know, what did we have this week? We started really warm and then quickly went to a cold weather area. So, um, are we going to name one more area? I've got pet, one pet tornado left. Okay, go ahead. Engineering. Engineering, all right. So, I've got a couple pairs of sunglasses. If anybody else wants to go ahead. Math, good job. And you? Astronomy. Astronomy, less so. Astrology. Definitely, uh, not. Uh, we interact with some, so I didn't hear you. Raise your hand and said something. Uh, we do interact with astronomy a little. Um, astronomers do need really great forecasts to know when they can get out and do their studies. Um, but I appreciate it's hard sometimes to raise your hand and say something. I'm not so we'll part of the science part. I'm like the person who type up the report in my published. Hey, there you go. That's absolutely important. So, uh, any kinds of questions for me? Um, about other majors, I, I do work mostly with meteorology majors, but uh, I work with all kinds of OU students as they try to find their path. Are you guys all thinking OU, Oklahoma State, TTU, TCC? I can just keep saying lots of letters. <laughs> How is the interface between TCC and OU with this program? So our interface with TCC is pretty well developed. Um, we're seeing more and more students come to us as transfers now, I think, just as we've seen uh, different struggles in the economy lately, um, and particularly for students who have interactions. I don't know about Broken Arrow, but I know some high schools work with community colleges and junior colleges where students can have kind of a pipeline and start courses early. So We have um, Tulsa Chiefs here. Excellent. And okay. so it's really well. well. Okay, Actually, perfect. The, the old, I was a meteorologist. The National Security Observatory. Oh, awesome. For seven years. That's wonderful. And I was in the undergraduate program, but I changed to mathematics. Oh, okay. And that's why I learned my love of teaching when I was helping my classmates. Absolutely. I would do the math part, and they would do the physics part, and together we there would work it out. But the point that's being your is team. That you got to have your people. You've got to have. They didn't have that bad thing, TJC. Oh, those of us who are old enough know what that means. <laughs> and so we have a really well developed exchange now, I feel. Yeah. Um, so there are sometimes classes that don't equate directly. And so what we ask students is if you do plan to go through and do work locally before you go, uh, and that I'm sure is true for Oklahoma State as well as it's true for us. Um, if you're planning on doing some, some coursework at a community college or a junior college before moving on to a university, work with a university level advisor. I work with students all the time who come to me and they say, hey, I want to come to OU, but I want to come to OU in 2020. So can you sit down and work with me on the classes that equate? And I'm always happy to do that. We have a huge database of classes that have already been equated by other people. Other people have turned in the syllabus for that course. OU has done the research and proven that it actually fits directly onto all one of our requirements, and we can make everything move smoothly. So uh, different programs have different requirements absolutely but advisors are willing to work with you OU has a transfer department that will work with you and then uh, if you need to stay at home or want to stay at home uh, for your first year or two and then come to us later we're happy to work with you on that any other questions college-ish questions Norman questions? Do they still have the work study program? <laughs> they do, program? absolutely. So we have, um, really what they're working towards now is a room and board program. So freshmen are required to live on campus. Um, and so something that you can do is you can work for the university, um, sometimes in the, in the library or uh, in a computer lab, sometimes working in the cafeteria, things like that. 
and uh, that will actually pay off your OU, um, your dorm bill, your meal card, that kind of thing. And then later on, if you move out of the dorms, you can do work study just to kind of fund a little pocket money, a little gas money for the car, a little bit of clothes, that kind of thing. So, uh, and that's work study. I'm not sure what that means. Sure, so work study in particular are those are jobs that are somewhat federally funded and it's where you're working for the university and then being paid by the university. So that means that uh, they're going to put your education first because you're a student first and an employee second. So usually they tap your hours at 20 hours a week and they will either not let you work during finals week, excuse my phone, um, they'll either not let you work during finals week or they will um, rearrange your work schedule during finals week. So it's a really wonderful way to, to have a job without, you know, because if you go wait tables somewhere or work at Walmart, something like that, that's great if you make, make good money doing that, but it's really hard to get them to respect your hours sometimes. When you come in and you say, listen, I've got a review for my Physics 2 test tomorrow, I need to get out of this shift, they may not care so much, but if you work for the university, then they'll be able to make those adjustments for you. And that's something that's really neat about the Weather Center as well, I want to mention. Um, because we do have all of these centers, the, the federally funded centers, the state funded centers, uh, they hire our students. And our faculty sometimes hire our students as research assistants. So that's true in meteorology. I know that's true in other sciences at OU. So be prepared uh, to do some research. Work in the area that you're interested in, if you can at all. It's a great resume builder. It helps you when you go to apply for jobs after college. And if nothing else, uh, working for someone who sees you as a student first and an employee second is incredibly important. That's exactly what I did. It's a work study program for National Superior Storms Lab and SIMS and all that together. Excellent. And I started out at 18 working with Dr. Peter Ray, the world's best operator meteorologist, back in the olden days, and worked my way on up. Absolutely. So it was a wonderful opportunity. And That's I the way to do it. I well, good. I think you, you know, were interested in this field. <clears throat> Any other questions? Does anybody want to hear about my, my drive last night into Tulsa? Can we talk about that? Yeah, okay. There's construction on the turnpike. It's a little crazy. That's <laughs> Do you guys want to just like tell me where I should eat lunch before I drive back to Norman? Sushi House. Okay. Canes. Sushi House is so good. Canes you can get anywhere. Sushi House, if you don't like sushi, they even have like other kind of food, like popcorn chicken All right. and fried shrimp. I so work there. If you go there, tell them about a Lauren. Lauren recommended you. All right, I get so it. Need all the extra tips tonight. So that's something that I'll tell you guys um, is kind of funny. <laughs> You know, meteorologists do have their primary focus on the atmospheric sciences, but they're interested in other things. So I have several students that are major foodies. They like to come in and talk to me about going to all these new ramen places that are popping up, or they like to tell me about uh, their double major with music. Um, there are lots of different areas that interact with the sciences directly, and sometimes just areas that you have an interest in. So if you have a secondary area of interest, if you play the violin, but you want to be a physics major or something like that, um, we want you to keep that interest and to know that we'll help you develop that to the best of our ability. Um, all of our faculty members have secondary areas of interest. They uh, grow gardens, they play golf, they coach soccer teams. Uh, so we want you to maintain that. It really kind of helps you keep that mental balance as you go forward. Well, um, I want to thank you for coming today. Let's give Michelle a hand.